In today's video, I'm going to be showcasing you guys this unique bass bump effect that you can be using throughout your music videos, especially with the songs that have a lot of impact with that bass and you want to create that effect to obviously bounce back off of that sound. So it's best to do it with videos that come with a lot of energy. I wouldn't suggest doing it with, you know, like a slow song with hardly any bass bumps. Um, this is for like songs that have a lot of energy. So without further ado, let's dive into this. But before we do that, I just want to say thank you for all the support on the channel. Make sure you subscribe if you're new and hit the like button. Let's go. So the first thing you want to do is, is you want to drag the video that you have into your timeline. And I've actually selected a small segment of this video where I'm going to be adding the effect. Now, throughout this actual video that I shot, there was a lot of bass bumps um, throughout the video. So that's why I'm only selecting this short little segment piece here. So let's drag this in. And the first thing I usually do is I lock this audio symbol just in case I make any cuts. Um, but for today, we're not really going to make any cuts, but that's what I normally do. And what we're going to be finding is is the bass bump where we're gonna add the effect. So right here is our bass bump, okay? And we're gonna click M on the keyboard within the sequence so that it comes up with this green marker right here, okay? So once you've got that, next thing you wanna do is you wanna go to the bottom left here, click new item, adjustment layer. Now, when I open my adjustment layer, some people like to usually hold shift and click the arrows to obviously make their cut perfect with the num amount of number of frames that they want to use. But for me, I just normally click this and then go to mark in. I click play and I just let it play for a little bit and that could be roughly the size that I want it at, okay? So once I've found the adjustment layer length that I want to use, make sure it's not too long, guys, because obviously the bass bump is going to look very weird if it's a long adjustment layer. And make sure that it's not too short, otherwise you're not going to see your effect play, you know, very well. Okay, so once your adjustment layer is in line with the bass bump marker here, you want to click on your adjustment layer, you want to go to effects, and you want to type in transform. Okay, and drag that onto your adjustment layer. Once it's on your adjustment layer, the next thing you want to do is, is click on position and make sure you toggle the animation of a keyframe. So your position and your scale is keyframed and ready to go. Now what I usually do is I just slowly scroll through this adjustment layer here until I get to the end to finish off the effect. So I'm going to go to the next frame, which is right here. And what I usually do is for the first frame where I've moved, I change the scale to, let's just say, 130. Okay, so as you can see, we're zoomed in a little bit more there. And within this same part of the segment, I change the positioning and I just move it slightly upwards, which would most likely go to around here. And then I go to the next keyframe and I leave the scale. I don't touch it, okay? I leave that to the end. And I'm gonna change this positioning to around let's just say nine, I don't know, nine, 980, okay? I'm gonna change this one and go back up to 1,200. And then I'm gonna change this and just do vice versa and slowly decrease it as you're coming down towards the end of the effect. To what I usually do, is I click on the position and I click on the scale, the first one, position, and I click on this arrow. And that's basically going to reset my keyframe towards the end here. And I drag it towards the end, okay, after. I go on scale and I reset this set. So as you can see, we've zoomed in ever so slightly and we've moved up and down. So that's gonna create a mini shake. As you can see, that's a, that's a that's a mini shake right there. Okay, now the next thing you want to do is, is you want to untick this box and you want to change this number to 200. That's basically going to give it more of a blur and it's going to kind of smoothen out the effect a little bit more. Then you want to highlight your keyframes, you want to right click and you want to go to ease in. Okay, and I usually move my keyframes towards the end here. So now, if you was to watch that back, you have a small bass bump. You may look at that and think, well, 
that's not really how I want it or it's not enough. So what I usually do is once I've made the effect like this, I would then save this as a preset. So you can just name it new bass bump two, for example, okay? So now that we've made it as a preset, we actually don't have to do all of them keyframes ever again. So I would just delete my transform and I would go to new bass bump two. Now, new bass bumps here is the first one I ever created because it was a different sort of movement. You can change the way you move your bass bumps because you might want to use different sort of bass bumps throughout, throughout different sort of videos. Because obviously every song is different, every sort of instrumental is not always going to be the same with the same sort of sound. So let's just say I wanted to make this adjustment layer longer because I wanted the shake to last longer. So let's just say around here and I've gone to my new bass bump two and I've dragged it onto the adjustment layer. Now, when we watch that back, you can see that it has more of a longer shake. And to me, to be honest with you, that's a little bit more cleaner. And what you can do is, as you can see in this shot right here, the bass bump happens right here, but the effect doesn't start until around here. So what you can do is you can move the bass bump. The bass bump effect will happen before the actual bass bump but it will still look clean. So something like that. So it comes in before, but still looks nice, okay? So that's just, you know, very simple. It's a very simple effect, it's very clean. Um, you can change the variations of them. You can make everyone look sort of different with the bass bump effect. And what you can do is you can start adding flashes. Now, I have a weird way of adding my own flashes. I'm gonna show you guys now. You've probably seen it in previous videos where I would just put an adjustment layer on top of the effect and I would actually cut the adjustment layer right down in the middle, the top one, and I would go to additive dissolve and I would drag that on top of the adjustment layer so that when it comes in with the bass bump, it gives it a nice flash. Now you can just add your flash presets onto this if you guys have any flash presets, more likely you do and probably some that you've created yourself. Add that on top of the adjustment layer for the effect and I'm telling you now it'll give it more of a nicer and smoother look. You can do what I've just done. I just like to do this because it gives the flash more of like a subtle effect. It's not so harsh and it's quite clean. Looks very clean. Looks very clean, man. I'm very happy with that. So towards the end of this video, I'm basically going to showcase a few music videos that I filmed and edited with the bass bump effect I'm included in all of them. So you can see how I actually use them throughout my videos. But again, Thank you for all the support and I'll see you in the next one. We really got corn for snitch, no cat, so we really put corn on the strip. Of course. Seven E knee deep in the street, show my D town bitch. Can nobody got time for no fucking food? Working, working, chick chase in a bag, no burkin. Can't settle for the minimum earnings. No chat for my pagans, lit so tight, then I bag me statements. Need a mini get savings, could I go broke for a chick outrageous? With a spice, but she not like Cajun, straight from the islands, she need invasion. You ding me, in love with the steeds, you ding me Not for the homies, but for my own